Okay, this is uh, VHDL, and last time we looked at uh, listing 1.3. Actually, I have it up here, listing 1.3, and listing 1.3 contained um, the VHDL code for a one-bit comparator that we called um, EQ1. And it was an SOP architecture, and here is your um, contents of your architecture block right here. We just uh, basically did an SOP expansion on the two min terms, and I uh, have P0 and P1, which are internal variables. Okay, so we've got EQ1. Then I created uh, another file called EQ2. All right, let's open that guy. Well, EQ2 basically is two instantiations of EQ1. Yeah, let's uh, change the, the nomenclature here. Let's call this U1, and let's call this guy U2. Okay, U2. And what we're doing here is I am declaring an entity that's a two-bit comparator. It compares A to B and outputs A, E, Q, B if A and B are equal. A and B are both two bits. But the way I'm doing is that I'm, I'm instantiating two one-bit comparators. Okay, So we went through this last time, and then we did a test bench file. And uh, you know our test bench file came down here and instantiated an instance of EQ2. And then, of course, it mapped uh, EQ2's variables, A, B, and A equal B, to test bench A and test bench B. And then we just set up some variables. So when A and B were equal, we should get an output of 1. When they weren't equal, we get an output of 0. Well, what I want to do in this lab is go back and um, I want to create a new project. So this is project 1.3. Well, I want to modify this guy, but I don't want to lose 1.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do File. And let's see, I'm going to do copy project. Okay, so I'm going to copy this project. And where am I going to copy it to? Well, I am going to copy it to the same folder, but I'm going to call it 1.4. So this is going to be project 1.4. I'm copying 1.3 to 1.4. Okay, then I click OK. And it copies it. Now, I still have um, 1.3 open, so let me close the 1.3 project. Um, save the changes. Oh, I can't remember what changes I made. Yeah, sure, why not? And now let's open the project that I just copied to. I copied 1.3 to 1.4, and there is 1.4. Okay, so now I essentially have the same project, but it's a new one. So, like, you know, if you're working on a project in lab and you want to save it to a USB, use the project copy. Or if you want to save it to the end drive or the network drive, use the project copy. And then you can move it around. And the whole point is it moves all the files for the project. So now I've got a new project listing 1.4, which is identical to my previous project. There's my 1-bit um, EQ1, 1-bit comparator. And then here is um, EQ2, which is two instances of EQ1. All right. Oh, that's what it did. Yeah, I made those changes, and I guess I didn't save it before I copied it. So let's change these guys. These are going to be the name of the instances. And what we did in that last one is we used the new format for um, instantiating um, objects. Well, the point of this lab is to show you the old format. Okay. So this guy right here is let's uh let's put a comment right here new format and I'll say preferred because this is kind of the way you want to do it and then what we're going to do is I'm going to comment this stuff out uh, let's right click and comment the lines okay but what I'm going to do now is show you the old format okay so this is the old format or what we want we can call a VHDL 87 yeah so the new format is like VHDL 90 something or 2000 well the new format um, what you do is it's similar when you instantiate a component, but here what you have to do is, um, well, let's see, you can still give it a name, so we can still say U1, and then I give it the name of the component I want to instantiate. What's the name of the component? How about EQ1? And then underneath there I have a port map statement, kind of just like we had above, and then I have all the variables. Okay, so the variables don't change. Yeah, so we're still mapping all the variables, control C and V, okay, and then semicolon, and then I could do this guy here, okay, on EQ2, but then on EQ2, I'm going to want to map it to the upper bits of A and B. 
So look at the difference. This is kind of the new preferred way where you actually use the entity keyword, you tell it the current workspace, which is workspace, and then you give it the name, and then you also give it the architecture type. Well, this guy here is much less typing. I don't actually specify the workspace. I don't use the entity keyword, and I don't use the architecture. But the problem is, is how do you know um, which uh, where the components are? Okay. Well, let's try to uh, compile this guy go back to simulation and try to compile this guy and uh, see what happens. Well, we're probably going to get a bunch of errors because it doesn't really know where these guys are. So when you use the old format, you kind of have to do some other stuff too. You actually have to declare those guys. So up here at the in, the, uh, in between your architecture and your begin block, you've got to declare when using HDL87 instantiation. All right, so how do you declare it? Well, you got to use the component keyword. Uh, we're instantiating EQ1. Okay. Then you got port parentheses and then let's see in parentheses and then uh, end component. Okay, you don't have to capitalize, I'm just doing that. And then inside of port you basically have to uh, kind of set up something that looks just like your um, entity. I1 colon and standard uh, logic semicolon and then you have EQ colon out standard logic and there you go. So the difference when you use the newer format you don't have to declare it because all the information is here. The architecture, um, the entity, the workspace where it's at. But when you use the older VHDL 87 format you have to declare it up here in this uh, temporary section between your architecture and your begin keyword. Okay, so now if I save this guy, select it and uh, compile. If I didn't make any typos, the thing should compile okay, and it did. All right. So at this point right here, I could probably recompile everything and run my uh, simulation. So the whole point of this is to show you another way of instantiating things. Okay, that's good. Now let's run our um, test bench. And let's see, select that guy and let's simulate. And we should have a 2 bit comparator that is based on instantiating two 1 bit comparators. And let's see, we can kind of um, zoom to full view right here. And let's see what we've got. All right, we've got um, this guy right here, which is undefined at this particular point. Now, why is that undefined? Okay, I actually had an error here. I am converting from the newer form of uh, instantiating to the older VHDL87, and when I did that, I didn't copy this right. This guy right here, E0, should really be E1. So if I go back and change that, that's why I got that undefined on my simulation. So let's save that, and let's recompile EQ1s, and then we'll recompile EQ2, and then I will uh, recompile my test bench and then I will double click my test bench and simulate it. And now if we zoom to full view everything is as we would expect. We can set the radix to binary here on the two inputs and then um, when I have 0, 0 on both of them I get an output of 1. Here I've got a 0, 1, 0, 0, I get an output of 0. 1010 output a 1. 1011 output a 0. 1111 output a 1. 10 out 0, 01 output a 0. So I've got a 2 bit uh, a 2 bit uh, bit comparator by using two instantiations of a 1 bit comparator. All right, now let's close this guy and let's go look at our test bench file. Now in our test bench file we are instantiating an instance of an EQ2 and then the EQ2 instantiates an instance of an EQ1 and listing 1.3 use the newer VHDL format to instantiate two instances of EQ1 this listing here 1.4 used um, the old format so my question to you is what format does the default test bench file use when you create a test bench file well the default test bench file is using the older VHDL87 syntax which is why you have to declare that component here and then you're using the syntax that corresponds to VHDL87. 
Um, now I could change this and convert that to the newer syntax and I would not need my declaration up above. And I'll let you do that. Okay. All right. Well, that ends um, um, 1.4.